Welcome to yet another episode of the Farming Podcast by Private Property. My name is Mbali Nwoko and thank you so much for joining me. We're still speaking to Untlantla and today it's all about broiler specialization. We're going to get to learn about day-old chicks, mobile abattoirs and processing in the poultry sector. If you have any questions for our show, please comment on the comment section below and continue to like, share and subscribe to the podcast. Ntlantla, what qualities make a good broiler and what do you specifically look out for in your chickens? So normally we are, we are growing them, we are rearing them from day old to around four weeks. So what you're looking for is actually the, the burns on the, on the feet. If there's no burns, then you know your chicken is, is, is okay. Mm -hmm. um, bruises around the, the wings, um, it being not coughing, when you say coughing it, then it has bronchitis. Um, the heating system around the coop, your, your ventilation around the coop. So all that factors to your product being a good chicken. Yeah. So do you get taught to spot these things or, um, you know, do you get people from uh, maybe a private sector or government that come in and inspect the broilers? So as you had mentioned earlier on, in one of our episodes that um, I come from Butler and TUT, so you are actually taught that practically at, at, at one of those institutes, in fact not one, both of them, those, those institutes then um, from there, it's a more of a day-to-day -day running of a job. You, it's, like, it's, like, it's, like, it's like raising, it's like raising a, a, a baby. Yeah. You, you can't really say a, a mom knows how to raise a child from birth, so it's exactly like that. You, you learn as you go. Some of the things that they teach you at school don't apply, and then you need to like, uh, improvise here and there you know because one of the things that you notice is that when you go to these institutes they are mostly based for commercial uh, farming so now when you come back when you do small scale you actually need to do a lot of improvising and you need to be very vigilant yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis yeah yeah do you sell the broilers live or do you slaughter them to sell to the end, end, end user so we started selling them live and then we saw a gap as we are uh, one of the beneficiaries of the mobile avatar. We saw a gap. We want to increase into different markets and into different streams. So that's why we then went into um, the, 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 the actual processing. Yes. So you actually do from the processing, you move from um, livestock to from selling it live to processing and then you, you're increasing your markets. So hopefully from there we can then further process to Vienna's burgers, um, your Russians, your, your even pillows at a, at, a, at a stage where you are not, you're not throwing away your feathers. And actually, when we are moving towards feed meal, you are drying up the, the actual um, blood to make it as one of the components, the component, components that you use for, for your feed. Yeah, you mentioned this mobile abattoir, and I believe that was the funding that you got to um, uh, you got funding for this mobile abattoir. How is it going to benefit your business in the long run? Over and above just processing, will it create more employment? Will it expand your operations? Tell us a bit about how it's going to benefit your business in the long run. Yeah, so first and foremost, it is actually more of us creating employment, um, seeking more revenues, new markets, um, increasing your, your market from selling it live to process and then further processing it, as I said as well. So it is, it is all uh, a day-to-day -day game where you're learning more about the actual business and you are moving from there. Yeah, yeah. Around boiler production, we typically hear that, you know, feeding chickens is quite expensive. What are some of the ways that you're mitigating against high cost in the boiler production? Yeah, so as we had mentioned earlier on that we are one of the beneficiaries of the mobile laboratory, mm -hmm. what we do as different farmers here, we try and um, put ourselves together so that we have um, bulk buying and then those prices can actually go down. Two, we then try and put in supplements to help the chickens grow a bit faster then you don't use a lot of feed. And then from there we plant our own maize 
hopefully to uh, supplement on, 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 on the feed as well, where we are actually feeding our own uh, maize combined with peanuts, red peanuts, and it can actually withdraw all the other supplements just before you go and slaughter. Yeah, and you mentioned offline that you know you would like to um, explore other uh, commodities as well as f doing crop farming. So over and above the maize, um, would you venture into vegetables, maybe to sub supplement your business with boiler production? Yes, definitely. We, As a farmer, you quickly learn that you cannot be based on strictly broiler. You need to do mixed farming where you are now not looking at only the broilers because as we have been having a problem within the last two years, last year we didn't have enough um, day olds, so that's why we had to also move from actually doing the broilers to doing layers. We had an experiment on that, and that was a very costly experiment. And then now we we don't have we have a fluctuation of petrol, um, feed goes up really high, and we cannot really raise chickens with the constant uh, feed prices going up and down. In fact, it doesn't even go down, it constantly goes up. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's a bit hard, especially as a small-scale farmer, because then you're doing, um, you, you're actually feeding yourself um, the, the, the actual birds itself. You're actually doing a hand-to-mouth type of thing. You're not actually having profit anymore because your markets are running away. If it's not the markets, the, the actual bird is expensive. Mm. Moving from actually growing it from 34 rand to actually 40 rand, 42 rand, now that also kicks you out of the new market, hopefully trying to now move back towards where we started selling it live, where you actually have a more bigger profit on it. Instead of selling it for 50 rand, you're now selling it for 60, 70, 80 rand, depending on the weight and the size. So now moving on to growth and future plans, how many broilers did you start with at uh, Nutella Trading? And how many broilers are you growing now? And where would you like to see yourself in the next five to 10 years? Okay, so we started with around 1,005 broilers. Um, we are currently doing about 6,000, 5,000, 5, depending on the availability of, um, of day-olds and the actual feed price. We are hoping within the next year or two, we can then start doing about 20,000 birds per cycle now. A cycle all depends on the market that you are, you are, you are serving. If you're going to go for the live market, then you, know to, you need to raise your chicken for about six weeks. If you're going to go into the clean and slaughtered market, then you need to raise it for around three to four, four weeks. So it all depends on how fast and how humid it is where you are. Yeah, and uh, how many people are you employing right now? And where would you um, look to employ other people? Would you look at diversifying your labor force in terms of bringing more young people, training them, uh, getting uh, students as well? So how does your employment uh, um, vision board look like for, for, for Nutella training? Well, when we started, we had only two workers. Um, those two workers also being myself as well. So as a cooperative, as the directors, you actually need to also be hands-on. Now, as we are moving our scale from 1,005 to that 5,000, you need another two more extra hands. And then as we are being funded, we had hired another 12 more um, workers at the actual abitur. And then we are hopefully going to then start moving from that 14 to 15 people to at least 30 people where you are further processing and then hopefully start opening new revenues where you are, you are getting young guys who can actually be vendors as well because we also started being as a vendor. So you want to put them in different corners and let them go to your, your markets on the weekends and then they actually also get the, that five, 10 rands per bird. So it's, it's something that you really need to look into, think about and always create new um, styles and ways of uh, selling and getting new markets. Yeah. In closing, Nontlantla, um, what advice would you give to broiler farmers? Um, what are maybe mention the top three things to look out for around boiler production? You need to be very patient. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's one one game that you need to be very patient. It's labor intensive um, and very very high on finance because of the feed prices. Like for example, we were buying a bag for a 50 kg bag for 295 last year. Now it has moved from 295 all the way to 410. So these are all the things that factor into the business and then you need to always have loopholes or ways around it. So yeah, hopefully in the next few years when we have our own feed mill, we can also now start employing other people and we can actually start saving on rearing the actual broilers themselves. Yeah, well yeah. thank you for having us, Tantra. No, it's a pleasure, man. Um, Hopefully we can also do this again sometime. 
and we can learn from each other, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. SMEs, like Nutella Trading Agricultural Farm, are the lifeblood of the South African economy, simply because they positively contribute towards food security. Join us in next week's episodes as we explore the supply and demand of Nontlantla's business and how he's able to penetrate the markets that he supplies to. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode. My name is Mbali Nwoko. See you once again in the Farming Show by Private Property. Mm -hmm.